The following is a Q100 Sports presentation. Orleans Girls Basketball is on the air. Q100 WFLQ. This exciting coverage of Orleans Lady Bulldog Basketball. And tonight's game against the Medora Lady Hornets. Brought to you by Music Insurance in Orleans. For home, farm, health, and old life and business, call 865-2626. Hall Brothers Transportation in Orleans, meeting the shipping needs of the area for more than three decades. The Super Clean Car Wars, Maple Street, Orleans. Hoosier Hills Credit Union, offices in Bedford, Mitchell, Bailey, and Jasper, and French Lick. And now, Lady Bulldog Basketball. Let's go courtside with Cuban Andrews, Mike Hamilton. We don't have air cue. From the gymnasium, the doghouse at the high school in the Dogwood capital of Indiana, this is Orleans Girls Basketball, where tonight the Lady Bulldogs close out the 2017-18 home portion of their schedule as they welcome in the Medora Lady Hornets. Hello again, everyone. Mike Hamilton being joined by Kelly Schmidt as the last home game of the year generally means senior night, and that is the case here this evening as the Lady Dogs will honor Jenna Whalen, the lone senior on this 17-18 squad. And uh, we have already seen posters on the wall. She was uh, honored between games. And uh, certainly, Kelly, you know the feeling when you have to say goodbye to your seniors, especially if it's their last home game. Many more games hopefully to go for this Orleans team, but still a very special evening. Yeah, definitely so. And, you know, something for Jenna and her family to come out here tonight, be recognized for the time and efforts they put in. And hey, a lot of people don't realize how much uh, it takes to be involved in high school athletics, especially all the years all the way up. And they've done a tremendous job for her, and I'm sure Orleans is going to miss her. Well, they picked a good night perhaps because Orleans has absolutely dominated Medora. They've won the last 16 meetings, and Medora has not won on this floor. You have to go back to November of 2004, the last time that they won here in this gymnasium. So you obviously want to close out a, with a win and make it a close to a perfect evening as you can, and this may be the team to do it, especially to get Orleans back on track heading toward tournament time, which will begin three weeks from tomorrow. Yeah, definitely a game that, you know, Orleans wants to come out and get the tempo right out of the gate. You know, Medora's a team that comes in with not a, a great record, but sometimes teams that come in with that type of atmosphere, that, you know, they're excited to be here tonight and excited to have a game as well. And so you got to make sure that with that great start, um, you come out and show them that you mean business. And that's what Coach Gilbert hopes to do here tonight. Lady Dogs were hoping to build off a solid 23-point victory over North Davies Thursday night. They rallied from a 7-point deficit in the fourth quarter to lead by as many as five against Henryville on Saturday. But the Lady Hornets made a couple of big shots. Orleans had a chance to win it down the stretch, but a turnover and then an ensuing foul on Orleans led to a free throw by Henryville that broke the tie, and the Lady Hornets were able to hang on to the victory. So Orleans will start again tonight after this evening. They'll still have four games left, but they'll be all on the road at Borden, Lanesville, Crawford County, and closing on January the 25th at Mitchell. Meanwhile, Medora, just two wins on the year, 2-11, and 11, and they have only beaten one opponent. That was Columbus Christian, their first game of the year, and then back on December the 30th, when they came to Medora, they were able to pick up a victory. So Brad McCammon in his 15th year as the uh, head coach looking for a little momentum as well for his squad. Tonight it's Orleans and Medora. Lady Bulldogs 4-13. and Medora stands at 2-11. and Tip off a little less than 15 minutes from now. When we come back we'll be joined by head coach Jared Gilbert on the Orleans Girls Basketball Report. He'll join us in a moment. This is Orleans Girls Basketball. When it comes to buying insurance, you want a company that will take the guesswork out of finding the proper coverage at premiums that are affordable. At the Busick Insurance Agency in Orleans, your auto owner's agent, they'll work with you to determine the right amount of coverage. 
To get the best protection for home, health, auto, life, and a business, call Patton or Brett Busick or Josh Crocker or Richard Grace at the Busick Insurance Agency, your auto owner's agent on East Jefferson Street in Orleans at 865-2626. Busick Insurance, a proud supporter of Orleans Bulldog Sports. This is the Orleans Girls Basketball Report with head coach Jared Gilbert as the Lady Bulldogs play host to Medora on senior night. Well, Coach, uh, we had you on uh, or carried your game on Thursday against North Davies. Uh, kids look solid in that one, and I'm sure you were hoping to kind of use that momentum going into your uh, game at Henryville on Saturday and got down, got up got tied, just came down to a, a few plays at the end, and unfortunately the girls weren't able to quite make it, and, and you weren't able to pull out the win. Yeah, you know, we, we uh, I think we carried uh, some of that momentum over uh, to the uh, Henryville game from North Davies. We uh, overall played pretty well. Um, you know, we, we didn't have a, a great start to either half. That was the, the, probably the downfall more than anything um, from that game. But uh, we battled back and, and in both uh, the second quarter and fourth quarter, we, we probably played our best uh, at times offensively. We, we struggled a little bit with their press at times. We made some adjustments at half and handled it a lot better the second half. Um, but we, uh, we we did get up and had a chance. Uh, we're in a situation again where we had an opportunity. Pro felt pretty good about our, our chances. You know, we had the, a five-point lead there late and, uh, you know, they made some big shots and made some big plays and uh, we weren't able to quite finish. And uh, again, we're, we're hoping we learn from it and if we're in that situation again, that will we'll be a little better for it. Is this something that's kind of understandable, again, playing so many young kids and going through scenarios that maybe they've not been accustomed to and then, like you, you just pointed out, to be able to learn from this? So if a situation, uh, again, rises like this in the future, they'll know how to deal with it. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, that, that's part of it. Uh, you know, playing young kids, um, they're going to make some mistakes and they're going to, you know, have some times when, you know, they're, they're not – you know, used to maybe a certain situation, and, and that's why this is so important for them to get this experience, uh, to learn from it, and and they've been better from from earlier, so they are they are learning, and 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 we're getting better with that. So uh, we just got to keep on, uh, you know, making sure that we we learn from it and uh, get better for it. And uh, for the most part, I, I like where we're going. I like our effort. We we shot the ball pretty well again. Um, you know, so we did some really good things. Um, we, we battled some foul trouble, but we had kids step up and came off the bench that helped us. And uh, so we, uh, we we feel good about where we're heading and uh, hopefully we'll continue that progress and, um, you know, have a, a good week here coming up. The combinations that you're using, the rotations, again, we've talked so many times about you probably go 10, and heck, we saw Shelby Whitaker uh, do well, maybe can go even as far as 11, but uh, interchanging these girls in and out, are you still liking what you're seeing and then also starting to try to cement those a little bit as we keep drawing closer and closer to tournament oh yeah you know we uh, we feel confident in 10 11 um you know we can play that many and uh we uh we feel like we're, we're you know we're, we're pretty interchangeable so uh, that's a good thing and uh, we we have a lot of competition for playing time but we are starting to to kind of get a, a little better feel for who we want to uh, play uh, in certain situations and uh, where we, you know who we want to sub in and, and different things like that. Uh, there were combinations though on Saturday that we really hadn't played before. It just we uh, started to go on a little run and we stayed with it for a while and, and some of our uh, players were in some foul trouble. So uh, we, uh, we we still were able to do some good things even with some lineups they're not used to. And uh, I think that's a good thing about us is that that we do have a lot of kids that can play and step in and and on a given day you know. Step Step up and make shots and do some good things for us. Coach, it's hard to believe we're already down to our final home game of the 17-18 uh, season. And what I think probably uh, means the most to you is that uh, for one young lady, she'll be playing her uh, final game here at the doghouse. And I know that uh, Jenna Whalen has certainly meant a lot to you, even though it's just your second year here. But uh, we know how tough it is when just one senior has to carry the load and, and provide the, uh, the leadership and stability on a team. And, and I know she's uh, meant a lot not only to you, but to the program as well. 
Oh yeah, Jenna has just uh, she just exceeded our expectation coming into this year. You know, um, she's been willing to do whatever it is we've asked her to do. Um, you know, sometimes that meant you know coming off the bench and not playing a lot of minutes. Sometimes it meant playing a lot of minutes and inside. Sometimes, sometimes she's playing outside. Um, she's just willing to do whatever it was that was best for the team. And and we talked to her over break and just I talked about how proud of her I was for for handling whatever situation. That, that we put her in and, and making the most of it. Um, you know, these last couple games, she stepped up and started for us. She's shooting the ball well for us. And she usually always has, you know, brings that in, uh, whether it's starting or coming off the bench. But just her overall attitude and leadership is, is the biggest thing. And, uh, you know, all the girls respect her and, and, and really uh, look up to her. And, and I think she's been a, a great leader. And, and it's something that, that we'll definitely miss, you know, having her. Um, you know, just having one senior does. There's a lot of responsibility that falls on her shoulders. And uh, she's really handled it well and, and did a really nice job for her. So we'll, we're definitely going to miss her. And, you know, that that we'll definitely talk to the kids about making sure we're ready to play for her because this is her last home game, and, and it means a lot. Um, and it should mean a lot for the other kids because of all the things that she's put into this. And uh, so uh, hopefully we're ready to play and come out and give Jenna a great senior night. All right. The opponent is Medora. What can you tell us about uh, Brad McCammon's team? Well, you know they uh, they're a scrappy bunch. They they get out. And, you know I know they haven't won a lot of games and struggled at times, but you know they they do play hard and and they uh, you know they have a couple kids that can really uh, shoot the ball well. Uh, if you just let them stand out there and shoot it without without having some pressure on them. So we'll, our key, I think, is a, a lot of pressure. Um, whether it be in a zone or man, I think we got to really we got to make them make some decisions, get out after them, and uh, hopefully we can uh, turn them over and create some easy offensive opportunities for us. And coaches, we close things out. Uh, the game important, not just from the standpoint that you want to go out a winner at home, but with these last four on the road, trying to reestablish some momentum, and uh, certainly you got to think that uh, you can be competitive in all four of these games. Uh, and of course. The major point is trying to get better through each of those, so you're playing your best basketball here at the end of this month. Oh yeah, you know we uh, we want to get back and, and and win some games just for the confidence standpoint of you know winning kind of carries over into other games, and uh, there's no better time to start that than now or up here before sectional, and uh, so we want to be playing our best basketball. So it's it's we told the girls the other night when we got back, you know this this game's important not only from the standpoint of going out being ready to play, but of making sure that we get better. With, with every opportunity, whether it's practice or a game, that we have to get better. And, and to get where we want to get by sectional, uh, we can't waste any opportunity. So tonight's a great opportunity for us to take that step and uh, continue uh, getting better and hopefully getting on a roll here late in the season. All right, Coach, thanks as always for the chat. Go out and get them tonight. Thank you. And this has been the Orleans Girls Basketball Report with Head Coach Jared Gilbert. As the Lady Bulldogs take on Medora, we'll have more of our pregame in a moment. This is Orleans Girls Basketball. All Brothers Transportation in Orleans, a name that has stood for dependability for many years, is proud to continue their support of the Orleans Bulldogs and to the many events and activities of the school and the community as well. They realize the importance athletics have on our young people in building character and to adults in experiencing the thrill of high school sports. Hall Brothers Transportation has been serving the shipping needs of much of the Midwest, providing the link to keep businesses strong and our area's economy growing. Hall Brothers Transportation, Highway 37 in Orleans, serving the area since 1979. up with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how you and the girls have been playing this year. Well, we've been uh, at time inconsistent, but we're trying to work on some things, trying to get more consistent and just uh, level play to our competition. It seems like sometimes we have a difficulty uh, with handling the ball like we need to, a lot of turnovers, so we're trying to cut that down, trying to get kids to understand what the role is on the team. We're fortunate that we have 10 kids out now. We haven't had that for several years, so that kind of helps you in practice in the past we've had to you know almost create drills when you got six or seven kids on the team so it's uh, been a different focus in that regard and we're starting to get kids to come around and understand what they got to contribute to the game so uh, it's a learning process but uh, we're taking it a step at a time talk a little bit about who uh, uh, some of the girls are that have made the most contribution 
Well, really, Hatfield and Kalen Flynn have obviously been uh, big scorers for us, uh, led the way there. And we've had just, uh, just a, a different group each night, seems like, step up rebounding wise, uh, uh, helping us out there. And we've had just kind of, I guess, by committee in the post, we run two or three girls in there. And so um, we, we've just had a lot of uh, kids play different roles, and we're just, like I said, just trying to get a lineup that. Uh, it's consistent. We rotate a lot of kids and just try to keep people fresh. And, and uh, like I say, we're just learning, kind of taking steps, little steps at a time to get where we want to be. And, and obviously, we know coming up against Orleans, they, they're known for their pressure defense. And so, be a good test for us, uh, you know, take care of the basketball and try to execute on the offensive end and get back on defense. I was going to say, uh, in the past, this would be perhaps a, a preview of a, a possible sectional matchup. That's not going to happen now with the realignments, but uh, is this still going to be a good test for you? Oh, yeah, Orleans is always a solid ball club. You know that they're not going to beat themselves. They're not going to turn the ball over, and they're not going to make mental mistakes. So I told the girls, this is, this is what a good ball club looks like. Yeah, I understand next, this year maybe they don't have as many wins as they want, but they play a tremendous schedule. And uh, when you play the level of competition they play, schedule doesn't always indicate the talent that's on the floor and so I you know it's a litmus test for our girls to understand you know can you compete and can you stay in the ball game and can play hard for four quarters and keep your focus. Any other keys uh, you haven't already talked about that'll be important? I, I think it's just a, for us it's just a big part of our game is going to be mental attitude playing on the road and understanding against a good team what you got to do to compete and so we're going to go out and give everything we got and see where we end up. All right. Hopefully it works out on your uh, your side. Coach, thanks as always to uh, for joining us. Always a pleasure to talk to you. We wish you the best not only tonight but on through the rest of the season as well. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And that is Brad McKinnon, the head coach of the Medora Lady Hornets, joining us prior to tonight's game as the Lady Bulldogs take on Medora. We'll have more of our pregame in a moment. This is Orleans Girls Basketball. Ready to lower your credit card payments? Pay them off faster? You can do it when you transfer to a low-rate Visa card from Hoosier Hills Credit Union. Let Hoosier Hills help you transfer your high-interest balances so you can save more. There are no balance transfer, cash advance, or annual fees. None. And rates are as low as 7.9% APR. It's easy to switch. Visit HoosierHills.com to start today. Limited time offer. Qualification standards apply. Federally insured by the NCUA. For the latest road conditions 24 hours a day, call the Indiana State Police Road Condition Hotline. The number to call, 800 261 7623, 24 hours a day. The following safety tips could save your life if your vehicle should become stranded during the freezing temperatures of wintertime. Before you leave, let someone know you're out of travel. Always keep your gas tank full. Carry a winter survival kit to include blankets, flashlights, candles and matches, and non-perishable high-calorie foods. Do not leave your car stranded. Remember, it is your best protection. Roll down a window a small amount for fresh air. Make sure your car's exhaust pipe is not blocked. And carry a fully charged cell phone and call 911. This is Indiana State Police Sergeant Chad Dick reminding you to be prepared this winter season. Forecast for tonight calling for clear skies and foggy. Low 26 degrees. On Tuesday, most of the cloudy, foggy, high 40. And tomorrow night, cloudy with a 30% chance of rain, low 36. Wednesday through Friday, chance of rain Wednesday and Thursday. And chance of rain and snow on Friday. Currently at Q100, 18 over from 8 o'clock, currently 35 degrees. Oftentimes, first impressions start with your car. What does your car say about you? Hi, I'm JC Watson with Super Clean Car Wash. A dirty and messy car can give the impression that you're disorganized or just don't care. Make a sparkling impression that lasts. Stop by one of our Super Clean Car Wash locations. In Bedford, we are located behind McDonald's or find us in Orleans on Main Street. Super Clean Car Wash. It's not clean till it's super clean. When it comes to buying insurance, you want a company that will take the guesswork out of finding the proper coverage at premiums that are affordable. At the Busick Insurance Agency in Orleans, your auto owner's agent, they'll work with you to determine the right amount of coverage. 
To get the best protection for home, health, auto, life, and business, call Patton or Brett Busick or Josh Crocker or Richard Grace at the Busick Insurance Agency, your auto owner's agent on East Jefferson Street in Orleans at 865-2626. Busick Insurance, a proud supporter of Orleans Bulldog Sports. This is Orleans Junior forward Audrey Elrod. Thanks for listening to Lady Bulldogs Basketball right here on Q100. as the Lady Bulldogs honor one of their own, Jenna Whalen, playing the final game of her career on this floor. Let's take a look at the starting lineups in the contest. First for Medora, 2-11 and 11 on the year, just 1-4 and four away from home. They'll have Gwyneth Morris, a 5'3 junior at one forward, averaging 3.2 a game, along with Kaylin Flynn, a 5'5 junior at 10.3 per outing. In the middle is Kelsey Turner, a 5'7 sophomore, at a point and a half per contest. And in the backcourt, it's Mercedes Phillips, a 5'2 senior at 1.4, along with the leading score on the team, Lily Hatfield, 5'2 and a senior, 13 points per outing. Brad McCammon in his 15th year, 80 and 229, the record of winning mark of almost 26%. For Orleans, they'll go as they've done the last couple of games with three freshmen, a junior and a senior. Audrey Elrod, the junior, 5'7", a 6.4 game at a forward. 5'8", freshman Sheridan Robbins, a 10.6 per outing. The other forward in the middle, six-foot rookie Haley Powell at seven per outing. And in the backcourt, it's the freshman Peyton Blanton, 5'6", at 3.8, along with the 5'7", senior Jenna Whalen at 4.1 a game. Jared Gilbert, his second year in Orleans, 10 and 28. The winning mark, a record of 26%. We're ready to get started here. Orleans in white. Medora is in red. The Lady Bulldogs go left to right here in this first half of play as Haley Powell getting set to jump it with Kaylee Turner and the tap controlled into the front court to Sheridan Robbins, who turns, skips it underneath to a wide open L, Audrey Elrod, and the Lady Bulldogs waste no time in getting on the board first. Full court pressure, or, lean, or Medora breaks it, and they get Turner down low for a layup. She misses one, had the second one blocked, and Peyton Blanton comes out of there with it. So even though Medora able to break the pressure, they couldn't score on their first possession as a missed layup, costly there. Here is Robbins, cross courts it now to Jenna Whalen, top of the key now to Blanton. And here is Sheridan open for a three, and she gets nothing but the bottom of the net. It is a sagging zone defense by Medora, and Sheridan didn't have a, anybody within five feet of her. There's a steal at midcourt by Haley Powell, takes it to the other end, misses it. Rebound Robbins, rebound again. She goes back up, couldn't get it to go, but she will be on the line twice. Yeah, right there, Mike. Orleans coming out very aggressive on the offensive end. Uh, Medora sagging back into that zone. Orleans going to take those three-point shots all night. Kaylin Flynn calls for the foul. Our first of the contest, and the first free throw by Sheridan would not go. Band here on hand to help celebrate senior night, and they are outstanding as usual. Second free throw is good, so Sheridan has four of Orleans' six points, and they have an early 6 nothing advantage as, again, Lady Hornets struggling to get the ball across the midcourt line. In fact, Orleans forces a hell ball, and uh, or actually I think they just said that the ball out was bounds. out of bounds. Yeah. Yep. So Orleans trying for a quick start. We're just a minute old. They've already scored six. Here's Jenna Whalen spotting up for a three. Bingo! That's the way to start things off on senior night as the 12th grader buries the three from the right side and already 9 nothing Orleans out of the gate. And here's a foul at midcourt. As again, Orleans applying full-court pressure, and they'll get Haley Powell on the Lady Bulldogs' first personal of the evening where you could tell they were really trying to set up Jenna that time, and they got it to her. There's a tip pass by Audrey Elrod. Goes out of bounds. Will stay with Medora. Looks like Coach Gilbert going to go with a 2-3 zone here in the half court, but they're going to extend it and try to apply some pressure to those guards, as he said in the pregame. 
And a held ball as Audrey Elrod got in there and tied up Kaylin Flynn. It will stay with Medora now on the alternating possession. There was a JV game tonight. Orleans had to play Paoli because there's no JV for Medora. It's a long left-wing jumper by Hatfield would not go. Here's Robbins running the floor. Kicks it off now to Whalen. Slides off the screen. cross courts it to Blanton. Payton will line up a three. It's short, but there's Audrey Elrod for the rebound. No good. She'll try it a second time. Couldn't get it. How about three for a dollar? That one wouldn't go, but the offensive rebound to Haley Powell. And finally, we'll get a Medora personal foul. Mike, that's six offensive rebounds so far and just less than two minutes of action for the Bulldogs. That shows Medora they've got to do a better job checking out. First foul on Gwyneth Morris, second on the team. Orleans will play it in from underneath their own basket. Right in low to Haley Powell. Banks it off the window. Count it. And Haley will have a chance at a three-point play as now four of the five starters have scored here. As Orleans has raced out to an 11 to nothing advantage. That foul again on Gwyneth Morris. That's her second. So Brad McCammon will have to go to his bench as Haley fires up the free one. No good. But Audrey Elrod the rebound. Couple of dribbles, cross courts it to Robbins, out of the corner, her three wouldn't go, and the rebound shot out of bounds, and they'll say it's off of Orleans. First substitution of the game, we'll have Katie Beasley, a 5'7 senior, two and a half a game, check into the lineup, as she will replace Gwyneth Morris. Cross court pass comes off to Phillips, Medora does get it into the front court. Phillips picks up the dribble, goes down to the corner now to Beasley. On the hold, back out of the wing. It's intercepted by Peyton Blanton. She'll bring it back the other way, kick it down to the corner now to Elrod, in low to Haley Powell. Shoots it out to Jenna Whalen for another three. Try that is good. Wow, Jenna Whalen. She is feeling it here on her night, and timeout called by Brad McCammon as. Lady Bulldogs are rolling early. 5.26 to go. Opening quarter from the Bulldogs. Out all Orleans thus far. They lead 14 to nothing on the Music and Charge scoreboard. Back with more Lady Bulldogs basketball in just a moment. All Brothers Transportation in Orleans, a name that has stood for dependability for many years, is proud to continue their support of the Orleans Bulldogs and to the many events and activities of the school and the community as well. They realize the importance athletics have on our young people in building character and to adults in experiencing the thrill of high school sports. Hall Brothers Transportation has been serving the shipping needs of much of the Midwest, providing the link to keep businesses strong and our area's economy growing. Hall Brothers Transportation, Highway 37 in Orleans, serving the area since 1979. This is Orleans senior forward Jenna Whalen, and you're listening to Lady Bulldogs basketball on Q100. to an early 14 to nothing lead mainly because they have hit here five and Medora has a 0 4 3 here's Hatfield kicks it down to the corner now to Flynn works it in low to Phillips who tries to bank one in from the left side wouldn't go Haley Powell grabs the rebound and we'll leave it off now for Peyton Blanton Lady Bulldogs still going with their starting five. Powell kicks it baseline to Robbins. Launches a baseline 10-footer. Well, I'll tell you what, for a freshman, that's about as pure a shooter as you're going to find, Kelly. Yeah, nice jump shot there. She was catching, looking to shoot right off the bat, and had great form. 16 to nothing. There's a almost a steal by Peyton Blanton. She actually got a hand on it and tried to bring it back the other way and dribble it off her knee. Now Jared Gilbert will go to his bench. Sidney Moon, a 5'7 junior at 3.1, checks into the lineup. So does Maddie Jones, a 5'7 junior at 2.5. And And Jacqueline Gherkin, 5'7 sophomore at 4.2 per contest. Now in the game for Orleans. And the Lady Bulldogs applying all sorts of pressure. Down to the corner goes to... Beasley tried to dribble between two defenders, lost it, scramble for the loose ball. Maddie Jones has got it, clears it off to Jacqueline Gherkin, and her outlet pass intended for Jenna Whalen 
did not connect, and Orleans, that's first, just their first yeah, turnover. First, first yeah. turnover, Medora has four right now, but, uh, you know, some offensive rebounds from Orleans causing Medora a lot of turnovers. They've had a, a good first quarter so far. Quick three by Hatfield would not go. Medora still looking for their first points. We're halfway through the opening quarter as Waylon to the baseline. Out of the wing now to Elrod. To Jones down to the corner. Waylon, can she make it three for three? This time it would not go. But Maddie Jones able to run down the rebound. Yet another offensive board for the Lady Dogs. Now back to Waylon. Jenna makes it three for four. This time from the top of the arc. I think she's hit one from the left side, one from the right, and one from up on top. Nine points now for Jenna Whalen. Why not make this last game on your home floor a memorable one? And at least through the first four and a half minutes she has. Nineteen to nothing. There's a pass they tried to go on the high post to Turner and it was kicked away by Orleans. Okay, if you're Coach McCammon right now, you're definitely telling your players anytime she's open with the basketball, you've got to have a hand. Uh, she's definitely, like you said, three of four from the three-point line. Definitely got the hot hand so far here tonight. A couple of substitutions for Brad McCammon. Brianna Phillips, a 5'8 senior, averaging a half point a game, checks in. And also Taylor Hunter, a 5'8 junior, at one point. Rob in on the post, knocked away, scrambled for the loose ball, and Audrey Elrod has it. She's got Waylon ahead of the pack, so instead she'll go off. Well, they had two. One of them was uh, Sydney Moon on the left side. And Sydney able to lay it up and in. And there's a steal by Jenna. Outlet pass ahead to a breaking Sydney Moon, and she'll take it in for two more. And that's going to prompt yet another timeout by Brad McCammon. This time it'll be a 30-second timeout with 2.55 remaining here in the opening quarter. Orleans has now stretched the lead out to 23 to nothing on the Busick Insurance scoreboard. From the varsity all the way down to the elementary grades, your friends at Scott Doherty Trucking are proud to salute each student athlete for their hard work and dedication and continue in the legacy of excellence that is Lady Bulldogs basketball. Good luck all season long from everyone at Scott Doherty Trucking in Orleans, keeping America's economy on the move. Five minutes in, Medora still looking for their first points, and Lady Bulldogs making it look easy so far. Hatfield will work it into the front court from Medora, slides it right, comes back left now, keeps the dribble, goes on the high post, intended for Pfeiffer, knocked away. Here's Sydney Moon on a break to the other end, and she's had three fast break baskets. Six now for Sydney Moon, 25 to nothing. Here is Hatfield on the left wing, picks up the dribble, tried to go in low to Hunter, and stepping in front of her was Haley Powell. That's Pick the Durkin. eighth turnover for Medora, Mike. Moon works it around to Haley Powell, drives it into lane, puts up the 10-footer. Oh, it spins out. A rare miss for Orleans, but also a rare defensive rebound for Medora as Hunter came out of there with it. Off to Hatfield, fakes, drives it into the lane, and draws the foul. It's not going to be a shooting foul, but they'll get Haley Powell on the personal, and that is her second. She has both of the Orleans team fouls thus far, and we'll see what Jared Gilbert wants to do. I think he'll go to his bench. Ball comes into Hatfield out of the corner. Tried to pass it in low to Kenley King, who's in the game now, or actually that's uh, Brianna Pfeiffer still in there. 155 to go opening quarter. 25 to nothing. In favor of Orleans. Up top, this is Flynn with the basketball. Their second leading scorer will launch a three pointer. It clangs off the back iron. Long rebound to Moon. Sydney brings it all the way down court, takes it right to the goal, and lays it up and in. That is four fast break layups now for Sydney Moon. Eight points in the contest, and it's now 27. To nothing, Lady Bulldogs, with a minute and a half to go. Here's Hatfield, top of the key, drives it left, and she moved her pivot foot. That'll be a walking violation. Well, we'll see here. Um, Kelly, when the Valley Boys played Medora, they scored the game's first 45 points before Medora got on the board. So we'll see here with a minute 25 to go. Orleans still has a little ways to go, but... 
not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, definitely not. And, you know, Coach Gilbert right now probably scratching his head. He, he hate to hold the team scoreless, but at the same time, your kids are playing well. You want things to continue, especially at this point in the season. I post Maddie Jones from 15. Bounces a couple of times on the rim. Would not go. And here comes Medora back the other way. Flynn works it into the front court. Sends it left side now to Beasley up top couple of tips picked up now by Kenley King who is in there now a 5'6 freshman picks up the dribble looks to get it off now for a wild shot that is missed by Pfeiffer Gherkin comes out of there with it with under a minute to go quickly into the front court Moon drives it into lane scoops it up with the left hand couldn't get it Sheridan Robbins the rebound blocked away scramble for the loose ball and Beasley comes out of there with it now for Medora ahead now to Flynn stops works it around now to King Against Sheridan Robbins, takes her to the baseline, puts up the shot. Oh, she got the bounce. Boy, that was from a hard angle that time. Came back across, almost hit the side of the backboard, but just missed it. And she got a kind bounce. So the streak is over. It'll end at 27 as King able to get the jumper. She also drew the foul on Sheridan Robbins. Misses the free throw, however. And the rebound pulled down by Sydney Moon. So Medora's finally scored, but it took him over seven and a half minutes to do so. It's 27 to two, and now as we hit the final 15 seconds, Orleans will play for the final shot of the period. Ten to go. Gherkin out on top against the two-three zone, dribbling. Seven six drives it into the lane, kicks it down to the corner to Robbins, wide open for three, missed it, and the ball will go out of bounds. It'll stay with Orleans, and they'll have four tenths of a second to try to get a shot off. Peyton Blanton will trigger it in. And looking, still looking, lobs it in. It's tipped, and that'll do it for the opening quarter. What a start, though, for the Orleans Lady Bulldogs on senior night. Making it a memorable one through the first eight minutes as they lead Medora 27-2. On the Music Insurance scoreboard, we're back with the second quarter in a moment. This is Orleans Girls Basketball. Oftentimes, first impressions start with your car. What does your car say about you? Hi, I'm JC Watson with Super Clean Car Wash. A dirty and messy car can give the impression that you're disorganized or just don't care. Make a sparkling impression that lasts. Stop by one of our Super Clean Car Wash locations. In Bedford, we are located behind McDonald's or find us in Orleans on Main Street. Super Clean Car Wash. It's not clean till it's super clean. Ready to lower your credit card payments? Pay them off faster? You can do it when you transfer to a low-rate Visa card from Hoosier Hills Credit Union. Let Hoosier Hills help you transfer your high-interest balances so you can save more. There are no balance transfer, cash advance, or annual fees. None. And rates are as low as 7.9% APR. It's easy to switch. Visit HoosierHills.com to start today. Limited time offer. Qualification standards apply. Federally insured by the NCUA. This is Orlean sophomore guard Brooklyn Knight. Now back to more Lady Bulldogs basketball with Mike Hamilton on Q100. Start the second quarter. It's been all over lanes thus far. They lead 27 to 2, and they leave Peyton Blanton open from the top of the arc. Or she was just inside the three-point line and said, "Why not?" Drills it, and a good start for Orleans to the second quarter as they increase the lead to 29 to 2. In low, Pfeiffer works it back on the wing to King. Off now to Flynn, who will launch a wing jump shot and hit it. Kaylin Flynn. It's her first basket, so Medora will not go seven and a half minutes of the second quarter without a field goal like they did in the opening frame. Here is Elrod, cross coach it down the corner to Jenna Whalen, her jump shot no good. Audrey the rebound, one dribble back up, partially blocked. Scramble for the loose ball, and it is Pfeiffer that comes out of there with it now for Medora. Medora switching it up to that 2-3 zone. They were in a 1-3-1 one, one much of that first quarter. <laughs> Another tip pass stolen away by Jones. Throws it ahead to Audrey Elrod, who runs it down, grabs it, lays it up and in for her fourth point. Now the Lady Bulldogs scored 67 against Shoals back on November the 14th, and they're well on pace to 
eclipse that without any problems. Here is Flynn, right where she was before when she hit that jumper. Couldn't get the shot off. Throws it out top now to King. Goes back over to Flynn, deep on the right wing. I think she's used the dribble, so she'll pass it down to the corner to Pfeiffer. Off it comes now to King. It's Medora keeping it right now on that right side of the floor. Still a 2-3 zone being employed by Orleans as King continues to dribble out between the circles. Almost two minutes gone by. Not a lot of movement by the Lady Hornets. And there's a kick by Peyton Blanton on the pass. Yeah, I think Coach McCammon right here telling his kids, you've got to have more movement offensively. Orleans coming out with some of those traps and trying to put some pressure on the basketball, but if there's nobody to pass to, it makes it very, very difficult. And as I'm sure we'll see throughout the course of the night, Jared Gilbert going to do a lot of rotating in. As Shelby Whitaker has checked in now for the first time, the 5'5 freshman at two and a half per contest. Jacqueline Gherkin back in there as Medora throws it away over through the hands of Kenley King and out of bounds. And Brooklyn Knight, 5'4 sophomore at almost two per game checking in. And that's what you got to like about this Orleans team. They can go 10 or 11 deep, just yeah. interchangeable starts. Any of those 10 or 11 could probably start and do an outstanding job. So it's just a matter of who he wants to use. There's a bad pass by Whitaker, stolen away by Kaylin Flynn. She'll stop, pop a three that is no good, and the rebound grab by Whitaker. Five and a half to go before intermission, 31-4 to four Orleans. And Jenna Whalen, she'll miss the three from the right wing. Rebound Elrod. Back to Jenna. Let's try it again. Couldn't get this one to go. And it is Pfeiffer, the rebound, and almost threw it away. Nope, saved by King. She'll take it back the other way. Had it blocked. And Gherkin comes out of there with it. Ahead to Elrod. Audrey up the right side. Has one to beat. Pulls up for a 10-footer. Bounces off the rim. And the rebound pulled out of there by Flynn. Outlet to King. Brings it to the middle of the floor. Hands off now to Beasley that comes in. Misses it, but it's tipped back up and in by Kaylin Flynn. Wow, that's a nice little rebound put back for Flynn. Medora gets her sixth point of the game. 31-6 to six now. 4.40 to go here in the first half. Now Whitaker will spot up for a three that comes up short. And the Lady Hornets come away with a rebound. Bullet pass left side to Beasley. Stops, throws up a shot, tried to bank it, no good. Rebound grabbed here by Hunter, and we'll get a reach-in foul that will go on, I believe, uh, who will they put that on? Jenna Whalen. So Jenna will pick up her first foul, fourth team foul, so it'll be out of bounds to Medora. And Brad McCammon also rotating kids in. Gwyneth Morris back in there. So is Lily Hatfield. She's our leading scorer. She's been held scoreless right so far. Throws it in to Turner in the middle. Works it right side to King. Now back out top to Mercedes Phillips, who's also returned now for Medora. Nearing the halfway point of the second quarter. And there's a steal by Sidney Owens, who's checked in. Off to Sidney Whitaker, who takes it in and gets clobbered on her layup attempt coming in from the left side. So Sydney Owens, 5'7", sophomore, two a game, and that makes uh, 11 now that Jared Gilbert has used. He's got 14 dressed for the contest, and I'd say before the night's over, we're going to see all 14 of those in at one time or another. Yeah, definitely so, and you know, that's one thing that Orleans has been known for so far this season is the depth that they're willing to play, and it could come into a factor come tournament if there's foul trouble or, or things of that nature, but uh, definitely something that's to their strength. Whitaker's free throw comes up short. Second free throw on its way. Bouncing around it is good, and Shelby has her first point of the contest. It's what made that North Davies game back on Thursday, Kelly, so good because Orleans' top four scorers were all freshmen. Yeah, it shows the depth that they have, and, and like you said, the the um, classes that are, are coming and stepping up for some of these positions are, are young kids that will be here for the future. Hatfield tries to drive, cut off, circles it back out on top, tries to work it into the high post to Morris, taken away. Here's Whitaker back the other way, stops on the left wing, up top to Gherkin. Jacqueline will spot up for a three that rims out. 
fight for the rebound, and we're going to have a hell ball as Owens and Pfeiffer tie one another up, and the arrow will give it to the Lady Hornets. Right here, Coach Gilbert goes to his bench again, going to rotate some kids in and out and, and look at different combinations. Uh, it's good for some of these kids to get in with people that maybe they don't get to play a lot of um, game minutes with. Sydney Moon back in for Orleans. Here is Phillips. Dribbles into traffic, kicks it off to King on the right wing, drives the baseline, takes it right in, and overshot the goal. And the rebound to Sydney Owens. So take it into the front court herself. Skip pass over to Brooklyn Knight right side. In low to Moon, posting. Lost it, got it back. Clears it away to Owens. Back off to Brooklyn Knight, who drops in an 18-footer. Her foot was on the line, otherwise it would have been a three. So Brooklyn Knight is on the board with her first basket. And it's 33-7 to seven Orleans with two and a half minutes to go before intermission. Hatfield works it off now to Phillips. Dribbles it to the top of the key. Comes back left side now to Hatfield. Drives around Owens. Takes it right to the goal. Banks it off the glass and in. I tell you, she's gone left much of the night. And right there, Orleans gives her a baseline drive to the left side. And she's able to drive in and put two points on the board for her team. And it's 34-8. to eight. Jenna Whalen trying for another three. This one would not go. Good job by Sydney Moon to come away with a rebound, put it up. Oh, it hopped off the front of the rim. Otherwise, Sydney Moon would be in double figures here in the first half. Hatfield trying to get around Knight. Cut off by Owens. High post it comes to Turner. Gets it back now to Hatfield. Here comes the three. It would not go. Weak side rebound put up by Phillips. No good. Turner got the rebound back up. It wouldn't go. And a third try. This is Morris that could not get a point-blank shot to go. Here's Whitaker back the other way. Had it poked away. Here's King coming back the other way against Owens. Takes it in. Missed the shot, but Sydney got her on the arm. Yeah, I think Coach Gilbert, the only thing he can probably be a little discouraged with this half so far is some of the offensive rebounds that Medora's been able to grab. Um, they've had five so far this quarter, and he's probably going to talk to his kids at halftime about, you know, even when games are lopsided, scores are a little bit differently, you've still got to do a good job blocking out. So it is Kenley King at the uh, free throw line. Been impressed with her play coming off the uh, bench. She hit a, a shot a while ago, Mike. It looked like a, a hard shot in the game of horse. It was down on that baseline, almost out of bounds. Right. And she got them both to go. So King two out of three at the uh, free throw line. She was fouled on that. Other jumper, but missed it. Here's Shelby Whitaker from downtown. Boy, everybody lighting it up now. As Shelby from the right side has her fourth point. 37-10 to 10 as Orleans gets the steal. As up court, Maddie Jones gets it to Moon. Weak side comes off here to Sydney Owens, and she is fouled. So these will be some free throws upcoming here. Right now, Medora staying in that zone, and that's given Orleans a lot of opportunities from the three-point line. Tonight, they've been shooting the basketball pretty well. Taylor Hunter called for the foul. Her first as Sydney Owens' free throw is good. So we can start checking off players now. That is the ninth Orleans player to score as Sydney hits them both. And it's a 39 to 10 advantage for the Lady Bulldogs. Under a minute to go before halftime. Into the front court comes Hatfield, trying to work her way through traffic. May have gotten away with a travel, missed the shot, however. And Brooklyn Knight, the rebound, pours it into the front court. Turns against Hatfield, kicks it off now to Whitaker. Back to Knight. Moves it around now to Moon. Her wing jump shot from 15 off target. Rebound Owens back up no good, but two more free throws upcoming here for Sydney. Yeah, good offensive rebound on the weak side. Right right, uh, right there for the rebound, and then a quick put back up and in. Mercedes Phillips call for the foul, her first, and Sydney will try to earn a couple more here at the stripe as she gets that one to go. Landis Insurance in Orleans is serious about protecting you and your interests. They represent Hastings Mutual, and Landis is ready to satisfy your auto, home, farm, business, or other insurance needs. Hastings Mutual and Landis together providing Midwestern value since 1885. Call the Landis Agency in Orleans at 865-4792. Well, Sydney 
perfect at the line now. Four for four as both those go in. Those are points. As here's a runner from the left side missed by Hatfield. Long rebound tipped out to Whitaker. They've got Sidney Moon ahead of the pack who puts it up and in. Ten points now for Sidney Moon. And that may be a career high, and we're not even to halftime yet. Final eight seconds off the screen. It is Hatfield hitting a 15-footer from the left side. Lily's got her fourth point. One second to go. Brooklyn Knight from half court would have counted had it gone. Instead, it slams off the backboard. But what a dominant performance, pretty much as expected for Orleans. As they put 27 on the board in the opening quarter and tack on 16 more. Medora didn't score until there was a half minute left in the opening quarter. They do a little better in the second with 10 points, but still they trail by a bunch here at halftime. From the varsity all the way down to the ele- uh, elementary grades, your friends at Scott Doherty Trucking are proud to salute each student athlete for their hard work and dedication in continuing the legacy of excellence that is Lady Bulldogs basketball. Good luck all season long from everyone at Scott Doherty Trucking in Orleans, keeping America's economy on the move. We have reached halftime here at the Doghouse Senior Night, the last home game of 17-18 for the Lady Bulldogs. They are making the most of it. As they lead on the Music Insurance Scoreboard at the half, 43-12. to We'll be back to start our halftime activities in a moment. You're listening to Orleans Girls Basketball. Ready to lower your credit card payments? Pay them off faster? You can do it when you transfer to a low-rate Visa card from Hoosier Hills Credit Union. Let Hoosier Hills help you transfer your high-interest balances so you can save more. There are no balance transfer, cash advance, or annual fees. None. And rates are as low as 7.9% APR. It's easy to switch. Visit HoosierHills.com to start today. Limited time offer. Qualification standards apply. Federally insured by the NCUA. Oftentimes, first impressions start with your car. What does your car say about you? Hi, I'm JC Watson with Super Clean Car Wash. A dirty and messy car can give the impression that you're disorganized or just don't care. Make a sparkling impression that lasts. Stop by one of our Super Clean Car Wash locations. In Bedford, we are located behind McDonald's or find us in Orleans on Main Street. Super Clean Car Wash. It's not clean till it's super clean. The weather in the forecast, the Indiana State Police would like to remind you of the following safety tips when driving. Allow extra time to get to your destination. Increase the following distance between your vehicle and the vehicle in front of you. Clear all windows of ice and snow and remove snow from hood, roof, headlights, and taillights. Remember that bridges and overpasses will freeze before the open roadway. Slow down to increase traction and don't use cruise control on slick roads. Avoid abrupt stops and starts and use your low beam headlights to decrease glare from snow and ice. This is Sergeant Chad Dick reminding you to slow down and buckle up this winter season. The following safety tips could save your life if your vehicle should become stranded during the freezing temperatures of wintertime. Before you leave, let someone know you're out of travel. Always keep your gas tank full. Carry a winter survival kit to include blankets, flashlights, candles and matches, and non-perishable high-calorie foods. Do not leave your car if stranded. Remember, it is your best protection. Roll down a window a small amount for fresh air. Make sure your car's exhaust pipe is not blocked. And carry a fully charged cell phone and call 911. This is Indiana State Police Sergeant Chad Dick reminding you to be prepared this winter season. This is Orleans girls coach Jared Gilbert thanking you, our fans, for your continued support of Lady Bulldog basketball all season long. And before we start our halftime activities from the doghouse in Orleans, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Orleans girls basketball. WFLQ FM and French Lick, Indiana. 18 past 8 o'clock, currently 35 at Q100. Mike Hamilton along with Kelly Schmidt back at the doghouse in Orleans. It's been all Lady Bulldogs thus far as they scored the game's first 27 points. And although Medora would show a little bit of life there in the second quarter, Orleans using a lot of players and getting a lot of contributions and lead by 31 here at halftime at 43 to 12. 
on the Busick Insurance scoreboard. Take a look at the way the scoring went through the first two periods, leading the way for Medora. Actually, there's three players, each have four. That's Kalen Flynn, Lily Hatfield, and off the bench, Kenley King. They all have four. Uh, two baskets for Flynn and Hatfield. King had a field goal and was two for three at the free throw line. Gwyneth Morris, Kelsey Turner, and Mercedes Phillips all started for Medora. And Katie Beasley, Taylor Hutter, and Brianna Piper have all come off the bench, but none of that uh, group has been able to score yet. Two fouls on Gwyneth Morris. Nobody else from Medora had more than one. For Orleans in the first half, Jared Gilbert has used 11 players thus far, and nine of those have been able to score, led by Sidney Moon, who's come off the bench to score 10 points. Four over five field goals have been on fast break layups. Jenna Whalen, the lone senior on this team, and this night for her certainly, boy, is she... Uh, Made it memorable thus far. She drained three three three-pointers there in that opening quarter. She has got nine. Six from Sheridan Robbins. One of her two baskets, a triple. She was one out of two at the free throw line. Four each from three different players. Audrey Elrod. Shelby Whitaker had a three and a free throw. And Sydney Owens, four for four at the free throw line. Haley Powell has a basket for two. Peyton Blanton, a field goal for two. Ditto, Brooklyn Knight has a bucket as well. Only Maddie Jones and Jacqueline Gherkin, who played in that first half, have not scored. So, 10 from Sydney Moon leading the way. Haley Powell did pick up two first half fouls. Nobody else had more than one. Orleans led 27 2 at halftime. They outscored Medora 16 10 of the second quarter. And they lead big here at halftime on the Busick Insurance scoreboard at 43 12. And in case you're wondering, is this anywhere? close to one of the biggest margins Orleans has had. Uh, that is not the case. I was looking back at the uh, year. Of course, I can never find my sheet when I need it, but uh, remember one broadcast we had here that uh, was 70 to 5, so not close to that, but still pretty uh, decided advantage. 43-12 for Orleans here on this Monday night. We'll take a break and look at the halftime statistics when we come back. This is Orleans Girls Basketball. When it comes to buying insurance, you want a company that will take the guesswork out of finding the proper coverage at premiums that are affordable. At the Busick Insurance Agency in Orleans, your auto owner's agent, they'll work with you to determine the right amount of coverage. To get the best protection for home, health, auto, life, and business, call Patton or Brett Busick or Josh Crocker or Richard Grace at the Busick Insurance Agency, your auto owner's agent on East Jefferson Street in Orleans at 865-2626. Busick Insurance, a proud supporter of Orleans Bulldog Sports. All Brothers Transportation in Orleans, a name that has stood for dependability for many years, is proud to continue their support of the Orleans Bulldogs and to the many events and activities of the school and the community as well. They realize the importance athletics have on our young people in building character and to adults in experiencing the thrill of high school sports. Hall Brothers Transportation has been serving the shipping needs of much of the Midwest, providing the link to keep businesses strong and our area's economy growing. Hall Brothers Transportation, Highway 37 in Orleans, serving the area since 1979. This is Orleans senior forward Jenna Whalen, and you're listening to Lady Bulldogs Basketball on Q100. Lady Bulldogs on top of Medora, 43-12 on the Busick Insurance scoreboard. And I would say, Kelly, that the uh, first half stats uh, resemble the fact that this is a game that is well in hand for Orleans. Yeah, it definitely is. We'll take a look at some of these first half statistics for the Bulldogs. Uh, 39 total field goal attempts, making 16 of those in the first half for 41%. From two-point range, 25 total shots. The Bulldogs are able to make 11, 44%. In three-point range, as you saw, many in the first half uh, were, were able to be taken against that Medora zone. They've shot 14 three-pointers, making five for 36%. For Medora, 24 total field goals, just making five of those, 21%. They're five of 20 from two-point range for 25%, and they've shot four three-pointers on the night, making zero of those for 0%. For the dogs from the free-throw line, just eight, 
free throws so far this half as everything seems to be going in from the field, but they've made six of eight, 75%. Uh, Medora, just three free throw attempts, two of those going in for them, 66%. The rebounding, I think, something that's been a big key so far for the dogs this game. 24 total rebounds, 13 of those coming on the offensive end, 11 defensive rebounds. For Medora, 13 total rebounds, six on the offensive end, all six of those in the second quarter, and defensive, seven rebounds for Medora. Turnovers for the first half, Orleans, just four turnovers. Medora, 14 turnovers, and that's a big difference in those two numbers. So far this game, we've had zero ties and zero lead changes. And we'll take a close look at this second half as we get started. All right. about set to go with third quarter action here as it'll be Orleans basketball. For your next reception, party, meeting, or any special occasion, the perfect place to have it is Robinson Auctions and Gatherings with nearly 12,000 square feet of open space, a warming kitchen, restroom facilities, and plenty of tables and chairs. It's the ideal location to host any event to run out the barn at Robinson Auctions and Gatherings. Just north of Orleans, call 865-1313. That's 865-1313. Looks like Medora are going to stick with that 2-3 zone. We'll see if Orleans is still able to get a lot of those three-point opportunities or if they try to work the ball inside a little bit. High post, Elrod tried to lob it into Haley Powell, and it's stolen away by Kaylin Flynn. So Orleans with the turnover on their first possession here of the third quarter. They try to go in low, and we'll get a held ball here. I thought Orleans got away with a kick on that, but Medora will keep it anyway. Orleans in white now moving right to left here in the second half of play. Medora in their traveling red uniforms, white numbers, white letters, and white trim. Lily Hatfield out there along with Kaylin Flynn, Gwyneth Morris, and Kelsey Turner and Mercedes Phillips. So Brad McCammon starting his original five, and... We'll go to Orleans. They're also countering with their starting five as well as Flynn misses a shot on the right side and Haley Powell out muscles Turner for the rebound. Almost a minute into the third quarter, still 43 to 12, Orleans. Robbins, right side, throws it up top to Blanton, sends it over on the left side to Whalen. Jenna drives it to the wing, baseline to Elrod. Cross courts the pass to Peyton Blanton, who's open for a three. It kicks off the Window, rebound to Elrod, to Whalen, back off to Blanton, drives down, puts up the runner, no good, got her own rebound, and gets fouled before she can put it back up. Yeah, Blanton being very active there so far this quarter, taking a couple shots, got herself an offensive rebound, just couldn't quite get it to go in. Turn of the foul, her second for Medora, first on the Lady Hornets. Blanton will get it in to Jenna Whalen, who drives into the lane, backs it back out on the dribble. Looks for somewhere to go. High post to Haley Powell. who will launch it from 12. Try to bank it. Spins out. And scramble for the loose ball. And, oh, I think Peyton Blanton just threw it out of bounds. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if she thought maybe a teammate was over there. But, nevertheless, it rolls out. It'll belong to Medora. Well, and right there she knew she couldn't roll with the basketball. And so she was trying to get rid of it as quick as she could. Just unfortunate for her. No Orleans teammates in that area. Six and a half to go, third quarter. Out front, Hatfield kicks it left side to Flynn. She'll launch a three. It's off the side of the rim. Rebound tapped around, grabbed by Turner. Back up would not go, but free throws upcoming now for Kelsey Turner, who draws the foul here, and it's on Haley Powell. And Haley's been prone to some foul trouble, and I don't know if you attribute that to being a freshman, maybe Kelly or not, but... Uh, that's something that she'll probably have to correct at some time. Here. Well, definitely so. And, you know, the first half you saw her kind of shrug her shoulders with a couple of the foul calls. And when the, the score is lopsided like it is on the scoreboard, sometimes you're going to pick up some of those cheap ones. But uh, she's definitely got to find a way to keep herself on the floor for this Bulldog team. Turner misses both free throws. Orleans rebounds. Nobody has scored here in the third quarter. We've almost played two minutes. Blanton out front, works it around now to Whalen. Cross courts it to Sheridan Robbins, who'll launch a three-pointer. It is short, and Hatfield corrals the rebound. As Orleans has started the quarter, now 0 for 4. Here's Flynn, left side. Skips it on the high pass to Turner. Out of the corner goes to Hatfield. 
around the screen, up top, intended for Morris, and that time Peyton Blanton, the ball was knocked away, and as Peyton was going after it, she just shoved Quintus Morris to the floor that time, and yeah, Mike Pickens over here on the near side right on top of it. Yeah, Morris definitely didn't like that. Uh, she didn't see what was coming, and it definitely hit her like a train. Yeah. That's the first foul on Peyton, second on the team. High post, Flynn turns, baseline to Phillips, back to Morris, who puts up a 10-footer, it would not go, and Haley Powell able to corral the rebound. Now she falls down, which again is a book rule travel. I have seen so many of those not called this year, uh, Kelly, and I'm just really not sure why. Yeah, you know, I don't know if the score is so lopsided, they just let it go, but uh, yeah. that definitely was a travel. Good post-up move by Haley Powell, missed it, got her own rebound, tries to go back up, and this time does draw contact and the freshman back on the line to shoot a pair. Yeah, she definitely was relentless there, wanted to get herself an opportunity offensively and gets herself to the free throw line for two. Kelsey Turner, her third foul. Landis Insurance in Orleans is serious about protecting you and your interests. They represent Hastings Mutual and Landis is ready to satisfy your auto home farm business or other insurance needs. Hastings Mutual and Landis together providing Midwestern values since 1885. All the Landis Agency in Orleans at 865-4792. Haley drops in the foul shot. Orleans has done well at the stripe. They are 7 of 9. That one would not go, and the rebound pulled out of there by Flint. Almost three minutes into the third quarter, Orleans by 32. Flint, nice weak side pass off to Katie Beasley, and the right-handed layup is good, and the Lady Hornets are on the board here in the third quarter with their first basket, and it's a 30-point Orleans lead, 44-12. to Trying to change that was Jenna Whalen, who misses a three, and the rebound grabbed by Hatfield, and as she tries to bring it up the floor, ran into Peyton Blanton, who tried to cut her off there at midcourt. Ball knocked out of bounds, and they'll give it to the Lady Hornets. Uh, Mike, uh, Orleans trying to stretch this 1-2-2 defense. Medora able to get it to the middle, and as you saw in that last possession, when they get it to the middle, they're able to get some shot opportunities. Flynn lost the handle, but it was picked up by Hatfield, trying to slide off the Beasley screen, and with uh, not a whole lot going on, Brad McCammon will take a timeout and try to regroup his offense with 4.23 remaining third quarter on the Butchick Insurance scoreboard. Orleans with a 30-point advantage at 44 to 14. For your next reception, party, meeting, or any special occasion, the perfect place to have it is Robinson Auctions and Gatherings with nearly 12,000 square feet of open space, a warming kitchen, restroom facilities, and plenty of tables and chairs. It's the ideal location to host any event. To rent out the barn at Robinson Auctions and Gatherings, just north of Orleans, call 865-1313, 865-1313. I tell you, Mike, I've not seen this, but uh, Medora's got a parent down on the, the, the uh, bench that's giving the players water as they come off. That's a heck of a dad down there. You bet. <laughs> As Kaylin Flynn just knocked down a three, that's the first triple of the game for Medora. So Flynn now has seven. It's 44-17. There's a pass knocked away, and it's going to go off the foot of Sydney Moon and will belong to Medora. You know, you have a 31-point lead at halftime, Kelly, and, uh, you know, we're halfway through the third quarter. Orleans has only scored one point, but... When you have such a big lead, it's really hard to maintain your focus. Yeah, and, you know, you see Coach Gilbert down there. He's in his chair. He's not doing a, a ton of coaching standing up. He's going to do a lot more timeout and bench coaching here tonight, especially with the lopsided score. But uh, you know, he's not going to get too worked up, and I'm sure his players aren't either. Right. You're hoping to escape this second half with no injuries and, and put a few more points on the board, hopefully get some confidence in some of these kids shooting and right. mark up a win and move on. Maddie Jones and Jacqueline Gherkin in there now, along with Sydney Moon, Jenna Whalen, and Shelby Whitaker. Make out the quintet on the floor for Orleans. Gherkin, high post to Jones, kicks it weak side to Whalen. Wouldn't take the three, but Shelby Whitaker will, and she drops it in. Shelby's got seven now as she drains her second triple, and it's back to a 30-point Orleans lead at 47-17. to Hatfield tries to get into the act, but her three wouldn't go. And 
Waylon able to corral the rebound. Off it comes to Whitaker. She'll take it into the front court. Top of the circle. Works it around now to Waylon. Jenna Fakes drives it to the wing. Back top of the key to Whitaker. Oh, this time she passed up the three. Now they work it in low to Moon. Diagonal pass off to Jenna. Let's see if this three will go. Nope. And the rebound to Maddie Jones, and she'll get tied up by Lily Hatfield. And I think the arrow's pointing Orleans' way, and we'll stay with the Lady Bulldogs. Yeah, you see Orleans right here passing up a lot of shot opportunities, trying to uh, get their teammates involved. I know, like you said, I think nine kids have scored, or, or maybe in that range. It's hard to get everybody in that score column if they can. Missed three by Whalen. Put back by Maddie Jones wouldn't go. Now Lily Hatfield is ahead of the pack. Takes it in with the left hand and scores her six points. The Medoras actually outscored Orleans seven to four here in this third quarter. 227 remaining. As Whitaker top of the circle against the zone. Works it left side to Gherkin. High post to Jones. Weak side to Sydney Moon. Open for an eight footer and it rolls around the rim and drops through. Or you'd almost think Sydney Moon was the uh, senior here, the way she is playing. That's her 12th point of the ball game. 30, back to a 30-point lead, and Hatfield had her pass stolen away by Moon. Now Jones gets it ahead to Whitaker, coming in from the rest, uh, right side, lays it up and in. And Shelby Whitaker having a career night. That's her eighth point of the contest, 51-19. And there's a steal by Maddie Jones, just was able to take away the pass. Gherkin into the front court to Whitaker. Down low to Maddie Jones. Puts up the five-footer. Oh, it just would not go. My goodness. Maddie had a layup attempt a few moments ago, and that one looked like it was going to go down and just popped out at the last second. But hopefully we can get Maddie on the scoreboard before all is said and done. There's a little runner missed by Hatfield. Here's Sydney Moon ahead of the pack. Takes it all the way in. Puts it up. Would not go, but this time she will shoot two. She's had her six baskets. Four of them have been on fast break layups. Yeah, I tell you, they're they're hitting the boards and when she sees her teammate get the rebound she's taken off as quick as she can and they've right. done a pretty good job of finding her today. Foul on Kaylin Flynn is her second as the free throw barely grazes the iron by Sydney. Now we'll see Audrey Elrod come in. Out will go Jenna Whalen. 117 left, third quarter. This one has never been in doubt. Orleans scored the first 27 points of this one. That one also short, and the rebound knocked out of bounds, and they'll say it is off of Maddie Jones and will belong to Medora. Or will it? No. Well, I thought Mike Pickens pointed Medora's way. I but thought he did, and then it looks like he changed his mind. Yeah. I don't think he Brad pointed Mc... the wrong direction, I yeah. believe. Brad McCammon, the coach, I don't think liked it. Comes in now to Whitaker, to Moon. High post to Maddie Jones, 10-footer. Comes up a little bit short. Rebound to Jackie Kirkin, back up, no good. Audrey Elrod with a try, no. And Sydney Moon with a weak side rebound. Tries for the putback and draws the two-shot foul. So, tack what, three more offensive boards yeah. on for Orleans? I tell you what, they had 13 in the first half, and they're well on their way to getting just that many, if not more, the second half. Hopefully that will carry over to future games. As Sydney continues to be short. All three of her free throws now have just barely grazed the front of the iron. Let's see if she can at least get this one to go. She's leading the team tonight with 12 points and puts a little more muscle on this one but still can't get it to go. And then Audrey Elrod couldn't hang on to the offensive rebounds. It skips out of bounds with exactly a minute remaining here on the third quarter. Oh, right there, you see Sydney Moon get up to the line, and a lot of times kids this age especially, they get up there and it becomes a mental game, and right now she knows she's missed quite a few this game, and she's got to try to get herself back on track. That field out front works it around now to Flynn. It's the 2-3 zone, thought about the three. That gives it over to Hatfield. She'll launch from downtown and bury it. Or a it's very a great second half. Yeah, very productive third quarter here for the Lady Hornets. They've outscored Orleans 10-8. to eight. In low to cutting Maddie Jones, and this time she does not miss the layup. Good hustle that time by Maddie to sneak through the paint that time and 
get the pass, so she's on the board. The tenth player to score as there's a block shot on Kenley King, but I think they're going to say Audrey Elrod got too much of King's arm. Audrey will get her first, and Kenley King, two for three thus far on the night, will be up there to shoot two, and that one is perfect. Yeah, there you see Orleans kind of shaking their head like, Coach, that wasn't a foul, and in a lot of games it might not have been, but here when the score is a 30-point difference, it's going to be. Second free throw, good as well. So Kenley King making the most of her foul shot opportunities. Four out of five. She's got six. 53-24. 12 seconds to go as Elrod from downtown. Off the back of the rim. Rebound put back up. And good. That is Jacqueline Gherkin with a put back. Her first two. 11 have now scored. One second to go in the third quarter as King heaves up a wing jumper that would not go. And that'll do it for the third quarter. Orleans continues to dominate. And after three quarters of play on the Busick Insurance scoreboard, they lead Medora 55-24. Back for the fourth quarter in a moment. This is Orleans Girls Basketball. Ready to lower your credit card payments? Pay them off faster? You can do it when you transfer to a low-rate Visa card from Hoosier Hills Credit Union. Let Hoosier Hills help you transfer your high-interest balances so you can save more. There are no balance transfer, cash advance, or annual fees. None. And rates are as low as 7.9% APR. It's easy to switch. Visit HoosierHills.com to start today. Limited time offer. Qualification standards apply. Federally insured by the NCUA. Oftentimes, first impressions start with your car. What does your car say about you? Hi, I'm JC Watson with Super Clean Car Wash. A dirty and messy car can give the impression that you're disorganized or just don't care. Make a sparkling impression that lasts. Stop by one of our Super Clean Car Wash locations. In Bedford, we are located behind McDonald's or find us in Orleans on Main Street. Super Clean Car Wash. It's not clean till it's super clean. This is Orleans Junior Center, Maddie Jones. Don't miss a second of the action of Lady Bulldogs basketball by keeping it tuned here to Q100. With Kelly Smith, Mike Hamilton, with you at the Doghouse in Orleans on Senior Night. All Lady Bulldogs tonight, they scored the first 27, although Orleans has started to heat it up as Kaylin Flynn on the first Medora possession. Of the fourth quarter, able to knock down a three. She's in double figures now with ten. And then on the other end, Sydney Owens missing a wing jump shot. And the ball skips out of bounds, will belong to Medora. So Flynn now with ten. Lily Hatfield has nine. King to the baseline. She's got six off the bench. Throws it on the wing to Beasley, and her pass tipped away by Sheridan Robbins. And out of bounds. A lot of balance as expected for Orleans. Sydney Moon has 12. Jenna Whalen and Shelby Whitaker each have nine. Sheridan Robbins has tallied six. All 11 that have played so far for Orleans have gotten their name into the scorebook. There is Flynn throwing up a wild shot. They're finally going to call the foul. <laughs> that was a weird sequence as it uh, looked like. Flynn was trying to skip through a defender. May have drug her pivot foot, but the officials are going to bail her out and call the foul here on Tori Greathouse, who has just checked into the ball game. Now, Mike, a lot of Medora's offense here tonight has been off the dribble or, or quick cuts to the middle. That's what they've had an opportunity to do, and uh, that play was no different. And Flynn drops in both free throws. She's really come alive here. She's got 12 in the contest, and Medora has the first five of the quarter. It's 55 to 29. Sheridan Robbins wide open, left side of three would not go. And the rebound to Hatfield, and Robbins tried to sneak in and poke it away, which she did, but out of bounds. Now, Orleans not getting as many offensive opportunities so far this quarter, but I'm sure they'll continue to cross that glass as they've had uh, 21 on the night so far. King to the baseline, draws the double team, looks to get rid of it. Finally works it in low to Pfeiffer, backs her way in, gives it back off to Flynn, who misses it. 
and Tory Greathouse, the rebound. Tory, a 5'8 junior, averaging less than a point of contest. So she becomes the 12th player to get into the game now for Jared Gilbert. The other 11 have scored. Here's Powell on the high post trying to free up Tory. Now they go in low, intended for Sheridan Robbins, and she cannot hang on to the pass as it skips out of bounds. Yeah, it looks like Coach Gilbert's going to go to his bench here some more, get some more right. kids into this ball game, and. And out will go the three freshmen, Powell, Robbins, and Blanton, as Brooklyn Knight checks in, and then two new faces as we see Jenna Hall, a 5'6 freshman, enter the lineup, as well as Lily Pridemore, a 5'10 freshman. So a great rookie class here for Orleans. Makes it very promising for the future. Hatfield missed a three from the left side. Here comes Tori Greathouse. Driving it all the way in, who looked like she got fouled, no call. And out of there with it was Pfeiffer, and then Greathouse got around and tied her up. So six minutes to go. You figure the night is done for most of the starters and those that see the significant minutes. So we'll see here if all 14 that have dressed can score. Now they try to work it in low to Pride more, but the pass stolen, and then Orleans steals it right back. They work it in low to Tory Greathouse, who drives in, shot it a little bit too hard, and Hatfield comes out of there with it. 26-point, Orleans lead. Hatfield picks up the dribble. Ball knocked away there by Greathouse, but retrieved by Beasley. Off now to Hatfield. Drives it to the left side, throws up a 10-footer, and hit it. Wow. Goes to that left side. She's definitely <laughs> left-handed and loves that left corner. I would say. I didn't even think she'd squared up to the basket on that. <laughs> It went in. Got That's it all that matters, Mike. That's it all that matters, yep. <laughs> looks looks like a slam dunk in the scorebook. That's right. Great house post up, lost the handle, but picked up by Knight. Tries to go over to Jenna Hall, and the pass kicked here. 55-31, so Medora not going quietly here. They have scored the first to seven of this fourth quarter. Ball comes in tonight, works it around now to Owens. Left side of the arc, back to Brooklyn, out beyond the arc. Comes back on the near side to Owens. Now a diagonal pass, baseline to Hall, off to Knight. Brooklyn's three is short. Rebound tapped around, and Hatfield comes out of there with it. Throws it ahead, and it's going to be too long for Flynn, although she saves it in to Hatfield. And then she gets tied up by Brooklyn Knight, and the arrow will keep it with Medora. Good hustle play there by Flynn. The, the pass was definitely over her head. She wasn't going to have an opportunity to put it in the basket, but she did a good job hustling down, saves the basketball, but uh, Orleans able to tie it up for a jump ball possession. From the varsity all the way down to the elementary grades, your friends at Sky Doherty Trucking are proud of Salute Student Athlete for their hard work and dedication and continuing the legacy of excellence that is Lady Bulldogs basketball. Good luck all season long from everyone at Sky Doherty Trucking in Orleans, keeping America's economy on the move. Now not called by Medora with 4.43 remaining. All Orleans tonight on the Busick Insurance Board. They lead Medora 55-31. Back with more Lady Bulldogs basketball right after this. When it comes to buying insurance, you want a company that will take the guesswork out of finding the proper coverage at premiums that are affordable. At the Busick Insurance Agency in Orleans, your auto owner's agent, they'll work with you to determine the right amount of coverage. To get the best protection for home, health, auto, life, and business, call Patton or Brett Busick or Josh Crocker or Richard Grace at the Busick Insurance Agency, your auto owner's agent on East Jefferson Street in Orleans at 865-2626. Busick Insurance, a proud supporter of Orleans Bulldog Sports. Out of the Medora timeout, Lily Hatfield worked herself free along the baseline, put up the little runner, kind of got an unorthodox shooting style, I think, Kelly. Yeah, it's definitely a runner every single time, but she's yeah. relentless. She's going to score some points, and, and she definitely has, especially this second half. Right. Tori Greathouse called for the foul, her second, as Hatfield able to hit the free throw, and she got them both. So Lily Hatfield now has 13. Give the door a lot of credit. They're sticking around. They're yeah. not giving up, and they've had a lot of success offensively here this second half. Yep. They have now scored the first nine as Great House down low. A lot of contact, no call, and picked up by Jenna Hall. Couldn't get it to go, or uh, rather that was Lily Pridemore that had the put-back attempt. Now quickly into the front court. 
King drives it in on Hall, misses the shot, got her own rebound. Off to Flynn, around now to Hatfield. She'll drive it to the baseline, throw up that runner again. Oh, she almost banked it in from a weird angle and now fight for the rebound. And it is a jump ball, so it will stay with Medora as the arrow's pointing their way. Orlean staying in this 2-3 zone. Uh, not going to change it up a whole lot, especially the second half. Just going to stick to what they're doing. Off it comes to Beasley. Baseline to Flynn. Drives it out to the top of the circle. Skips it in low to Hatfield, who turns. Puts it up with the left hand. No good. Fight for the rebound. And Brooklyn Knights got it now for Orleans. As we're past the halfway point of the final quarter. Orleans... Trying to make it a wire-to-wire finish, and they're well on their way. As Orleans again, careless, turning it over. So 3.45 remaining here. Lady Bulldogs still have not scored in this fourth quarter, but they had a 31-point lead going in. So yeah, when you take care of business early, Mike, you don't have to do a lot late. But uh, right. I know Coach Gilbert would definitely like to see his team make some of those offensive opportunities here this half. Nice move to the goal by Kaylin Flynn as she tried to scoop one up with the right hand and didn't get the shot to go, but she'll be on the line twice as this foul will go on Lily Pridemore. That'll be her first as the free throw by Kaylin Flynn is good. That is her 13th point of the contest. Lily Hatfield has 13 as well for Medora. And the second one perfect as Flynn four for four at the free throw line. And it is now 55 to 35. And Orleans just threw it away again. Had a diagonal pass. Owens trying to get it over to Tory Greathouse. And boy, not to, not the kind of flow that you'd like to see. And you know, you want your reserves playing well also as King drives to the baseline, puts it up left it short and Shanna Whalen able to corral the rebound to Sydney Owens brings it into the front court up the left side backs away and kicks it off now to Jenna get in there nope wouldn't go rebound back to Jenna puts it up from 10 still couldn't get it to go and the rebound yanked out of there by Beasley quickly into the front court to Flynn skip pass right into the hands of Pridemore off to Jenna Whalen. She brings it back the other way and will draw the two-shot foul as she tried to take it in from the left side. Yeah, you see Coach Gilbert getting her back onto the floor, going to allow her to use some of these last few minutes as a senior out there on her home court and, and probably get her a standing ovation here as he's able to get her out in a few minutes. Yeah, probably here around the minute mark or so maybe. And Jenna, boy, just can't. Get those shots to go. She misses the first free throw. And they may go ahead and bring yeah, her in right like now. And yeah, there it goes. She finally got that one to go. That'll put a smile on her face as she heads out. And she will get a standing ovation from her teammates and a round of applause from the crowd here as well. Ten points tonight for Jenna Whalen. And she'll help lead her team to an easy victory here tonight. Orleans with the steal on the defensive end as Brooklyn Knight brought it up. She had her pass poked out of bounds. Just 2.33 left. That uh, free throw by Jenna, just the first point by Orleans here in the fourth quarter. High post, Pride Moore. Now along the baseline, Tory Greathouse overshot it. And rebound pulled out of there now by Medora. Big factor here, Orleans not able to hit some shots, but Medora's done a much better job taking care of the ball, just five turnovers this half. And I think that was a two-pointer. Yes, it was for Lily Hatfield. Boy, she is caught fire here in the fourth quarter. She's got 15, 56 to 37. But again, doing it against the Orleans reserves. Down the corner, Knight works it in low to Greathouse. Down low to Pride Moore, trying for the basket, no good. Oh, Tori Greathouse with a putback try, no good. And now Hall can't get it to go. And finally, Medora comes out of there with it as Ken Orleans missing several point blank shots. Out of the corner, King tries to drive it here on Owens, cut off on the baseline. Out of the wing now to Flynn. Looks for somewhere to go. Cross courts it to Beasley. Takes one dribble against. Cut off to Flynn. 
Drives it down the lane, throws up the runner, would not go. Rebound to Great House. We're down to a minute 20 to go in this one. Knight will jog it into the front court, moves it around now to Hall. At Tory Great House, flash underneath, wide open, didn't get it to her. Here's Owens out front. Beats it back to Knight, down to the corner to Great House, and Tory way off target with a three pointer, and the lady. Hornets board it as we're down to a minute to go. Here's a pull-up three now by Hatfield. Short. Rebound Beasley. Back up. It wouldn't go. And Brooklyn Knight able to pull down the rebound. We're down to our final 40 seconds. So Orleans will go to 5-13 and 13 on the year. Medora will drop to 2-12. and 12. Nice move down the lane, but Owens could not finish. Beasley the rebound. And we're down to the final 30 seconds here on Senior Knight. Here is Flynn out front on the dribble. Drives it left. They back off. She shoots the three. It's no good. Owens rebounds it. And with 15 seconds to go, Orleans will probably just dribble out the remaining few seconds and make it a successful senior night here for Jenna Whalen. Five seconds to go. Brooklyn gets it over to Hall. Up top to Owens. Two seconds to go. One. And that will do it. So Orleans... Comes out strong, the first 27 points of this contest. And they have no problems handling the Medora Lady Hornets, even though the Lady Bulldogs scored but one point there in that fourth quarter of play. So a good way to finish the home portion of the schedule, and they will make the lone senior on this team, Jenna Whalen, go out a winner on senior night. If you're an extra reception, party, meeting, or any special occasion, the perfect place to have it is Robinson Auctions and Gatherings. With nearly 12,000 square feet of open space, a warming kitchen, restroom facilities, and plenty of tables and chairs, it's the ideal location to host any event. To rent out the barn at Robinson Auctions and Gatherings, just north of Orleans, call 865-1313. That's 865-1313. From the varsity all the way down to the elementary grades, your friends at Scott Doherty Trucking are proud to salute a student-athlete for their hard work and dedication in continuing the legacy of excellence that is Lady Bulldogs basketball. Good luck all season long from everyone at Scott Doherty Trucking in Orleans, keeping America's economy on the move. We'll be back to recap all of tonight's action in a moment. The final score here this evening from the doghouse in Orleans on the Busick Insurance scoreboard. The Orleans Lady Bulldogs, 56. The Medora Lady Hornets, 37. You're listening to Orleans Girls Basketball. All Brothers Transportation in Orleans, a name that has stood for dependability for many years, is proud to continue their support of the Orleans Bulldogs and to the many events and activities of the school and the community as well. They realize the importance athletics have on our young people in building character and to adults in experiencing the thrill of high school sports. Hall Brothers Transportation has been serving the shipping needs of much of the Midwest, providing the link to keep businesses strong and our area's economy growing. Hall Brothers Transportation, Highway 37 in Orleans, serving the area since 1979. Ready to lower your credit card payments? Pay them off faster? You can do it when you transfer to a low-rate Visa card from Hoosier Hills Credit Union. Let Hoosier Hills help you transfer your high-interest balances so you can save more. There are no balance transfer, cash advance, or annual fees. None. And rates are as low as 7.9% APR. It's easy to switch. Visit HoosierHills.com to start today. Limited time offer. Qualification standards apply. Federally insured by the NCUA. For the latest road conditions 24 hours a day, call the Indiana State Police Road Condition Hotline. The number to call, 800-261-7623, 24 hours a day. The following safety tips could save your life if your vehicle should become stranded during the freezing temperatures of wintertime. Before you leave, let someone know you're out of travel. Always keep your gas tank full. Carry a winter survival kit to include blankets, flashlights, candles and matches, and non-perishable high-calorie foods. Do not leave your car if stranded. Remember, it is your best protection. Roll down a window a small amount for fresh air. Make sure your car's exhaust pipe is not blocked. And carry a fully charged cell phone and call 911. This is Indiana State Police Sergeant Chad Dick reminding you to be prepared this winter season. This is Orleans sophomore center Sydney Owens. Don't miss a second of the action of Lady Bulldogs basketball, but keep it tuned here to Q100. Glad to 
Insurance in Orleans is serious about protecting you and your interests. They represent Hastings Mutual. Atlantis is ready to satisfy your auto, home, farm, business, or other insurance needs. Hastings Mutual and Atlantis together providing Midwestern value since 1885. Call the Atlantis Agency in Orleans at 865-4792. Back again at Orleans High School. Senior night for the ladies, and they only had one to honor this evening, but boy, did the Lady Bulldogs tonight, Kelly, make the most of it. Yeah, you know, Jenna came out and had a great first quarter scoring-wise, and that kind of got her team rolling, something that she probably takes pride in doing as a senior, and uh, her team definitely put up a, a great score that first half, maybe a little bit conservatively lower the second half, but uh, a lot of times, like I said, when you take care of business early on, then you can just kind of coast your way up. Well, it can certainly be understood. You lead by 31 at halftime, and sometimes it is hard to to maintain your focus a little bit yeah and you know sometimes you you talk to kids uh, as these games come up about you know these definitely should be a a win in the win column for us but uh, we want to make sure that we come out and execute and in that first half orleans definitely did that Uh, maybe a little bit of a little offensively in the second half but uh, overall a good performance I, i just had them for 10 turnovers and sometimes these types of games you can catch yourselves turning the basketball over quite a bit but orleans did a good job of taking care of the ball throughout the course of this ball game well, let's bring in Orleans head coach Jared Gilbert now. And, Coach, congratulations on the uh, win here tonight. And as we talked about before the game, you want to close out the home portion of your schedule on a uh, positive note. And I thought the kids uh, came out and answered the bell right off the, right off the bat. Yeah, I thought, you know, we were definitely – the main thing we talked about is just being focused at the start and being ready to play. Um, we, we talked a lot about, you know, treating this like a, a sectional game and, uh, you know, it's – you don't take care of whoever you're playing. You don't. You don't get a goal. You don't get a move on. And uh, so we kind of we, we try to build it up to, to be as much like that as possible, and, and just really focused on ourselves and, and wanted to come out and have a good start. And we obviously did that. And uh, you know we we did some good things there early on. We shot the ball well, and uh, you know, then we we kind of uh, you know had some lulls there in the second half where obviously we didn't play play as well. But overall, you know we're we're pleased with with how we played tonight, and hopefully we got a little bit better. Yeah, Coach, you know, I, I had you for 25 offensive rebounds, and uh, on any given night you'll definitely take that stat a, a lot of times from both columns. But yeah. um, is that something you guys have been really trying to make a point of emphasis? Well, yeah, we, we've talked a lot about just, just both offensively and defensively just rebounding because we're not real big, and, and we ha- it has to be a team effort. And, and, you know, we've kind of been on them all year just kind of go to the glass and be more aggressive and then doing that stuff and uh you know tonight i thought it showed we, we definitely attacked the glass on, on both ends pretty well and uh so it's hopefully something we can continue to do here and uh leading into sections because it's something we have to do to compete uh, especially with bigger teams and uh we just gotta we gotta be scrappy and we gotta be we gotta be tough underneath and uh you know we're not not real big but that doesn't mean you can't block out and still be tough on the glass Always good to be able to get in a lot of players. You were able to get all 14 in and really for some significant minutes. So you get a chance to kind of analyze some of those players and a chance to experiment with some combinations as well and see how those might work. Yeah, you know, we're, we're kind of doing that right now with a couple kids, seeing if possibly they could come in and help us, uh, you know, sectional with a couple JV kids. Uh, last couple games, um, you know, Shelby's came in and, and played a little bit for us here and there uh, coming off of the varsity bench. She's, you know, doing a nice job, shot the ball well tonight again. So uh, she's someone that I think could come in, and uh, Sydney Owens also. Um, you know, just hopefully uh, lengthens us, our, our bench even a little bit more. And, uh, you know, at some, some time down the road, those two uh, being able to shoot the basketball like they can could possibly help, uh, you know, in a sectional type game if, if we're struggling shooting the basketball. So uh, hopefully uh, – they, you know, gain some confidence tonight, and uh, well, some of the other kids. You know, you uh, seem to be having different types of ball games. You kind of had a nice win or blowout win over North Davies, a nail biter with uh, Henryville, and tonight uh, the kids come out and make sure that it's not going to be close at the end. Yeah, you know, and, and again, that's what we kind of we stressed is, is the start of the game. We thought that was very important, and. and we were definitely focused, ready to play. You couldn't have asked for a better start. And, uh, you know, Jenna was a big part of that. You know, being our senior here, she, she stepped up, made some shots, made things a lot easier for us. And uh, anytime you get a big lead like that, you know, it's, it's others kind of follow suit and uh, it gets a little more comfortable shooting the basketball and uh, things seem to go down a little easier. So, uh, 
it was definitely uh, what we wanted to, to start off the game. And, uh, you know, we, we uh, I thought we wanted to make sure we got better tonight. And for the most part, I thought we played hard throughout the game. Well, indeed, you know, Medora still, they may only have a 2-11 and or now 2-12 and record, but they're a, a scrappy bunch, yeah. and the, uh, the Flynn and Hatfield girls are... Uh, pretty outstanding players in their own right, certainly, but it can also be understood that, you know, you have a 31-point lead at halftime. Sometimes it's really hard to, to maintain that, that focus. It is, and, uh, you know, that's kind of the, uh, the one thing that, that you always kind of fight against is, is that happening, and, and you know, I'll take responsibility for it, really, is, is you know, we, we kind of talk about, you know, we don't have to get out and pressure as much and do that, so... We didn't do that, and, and you know, we I thought some of our focus and some of our uh, just intensity kind of slacked off a little bit, and then they made some shots, and we weren't out on them a couple times there, and they, they, they are good shooters, and if you leave them open, we knew that going in, that they would make shots, so, um, you know, it's one of those you you, uh, you, you learn a lesson, and uh, some of our younger girls definitely, I think, uh, will learn from it and uh, realize that, you know, we expect no matter who's in the game, the intensity uh, has to stay what it was and uh, hopefully just learn from it and move on. I'd say you're the happiest with the lady that we're going to talk to uh, behind you, the uh, lone senior, so this night certainly belonged to her, and boy, did she help uh, get you out of the gate strong. Yeah, you know, we uh, we wanted to run the set for her early on there, just to try to get her going and uh, kind of take the pressure. You know, sometimes as a senior, you put a little more pressure on yourself to go out there and have a good game. But she, she came out and had a great game, did a, a lot of good things for us. And just like she has all year, you know, she, she whatever role she, she's uh, been put in, she's accepted and, and done a great job with as, as a leader of this team. And uh, we couldn't, couldn't be prouder of her and... Uh, and uh, I know all the girls wanted to get her uh, a win on senior night for sure, and they, they wanted to make sure that happened for her. So uh, it was definitely her night, and uh, it was uh, really about her tonight. So we're, we're, we're glad we could uh, get her the win. Well, Coach, one more thought before uh, we talk to Jenna here, and that is as you start to wind down here, uh, tomorrow we're three weeks from the start of the, the tournament, unless you get a bye, of course. But right. uh, you start feeling maybe that sense of urgency a little bit with just four games left that, uh, hey, we really need to start solidifying some things, get where we need to be, and, and we're running out of games to really find out how to do that. Yeah, you know, we, that's why we told the girls on our way out tonight, we just said, you know, these next two practices are, are huge for us uh, to make sure we're getting better. Um, and no matter if we're playing a game or practice at this point, you've got to use every, every second you can. Uh, to make sure we're getting better and to make sure that we're uh, doing everything we can to be ready for, for the sectional and uh, hopefully to make the run there. And uh, so, you know, it, it is uh, definitely uh, urgency time of, of making sure you, you can't, you don't want to do too much because you do want them to be fresh and you got to, you know, pick your times when you maybe get them from the rest here or there because, uh, you know, you're playing some games. But uh, at, at the same time, we, we definitely want to make sure we're doing everything we can to get better and ready for sectional. All right, Coach, thanks for the uh, visit. Congratulations on the win. We won't have you again until your uh, finale against Mitchell here in about uh, two and a half weeks or so. But in the meantime, let's get uh, get uh, Borden, Lanesville, and uh, Crawford County and really uh, keep this team on a roll. Yeah, we'd love to do that, and we'll, we'll give it our best shot. All right, we'll talk to you on Sports Chat on Wednesday night then. All right, thanks a lot. Good job, Coach. Right. And that is Jared Gilbert, the head coach of the Orleans Lady Bulldogs, as his team wins it tonight conventionally over Medora, 56-37. to 37. We need to take a quick break, so we'll step aside for a moment. When we come back, we'll talk to the Lady of the Hour, or however you want to put it, I guess. Senior Jenna Whalen will join us. Stay with us. This is Orleans Girls Basketball. Oftentimes, first impressions start with your car. What does your car say about you? Hi, I'm J.C. Watson with Super Clean Car Wash. A dirty and messy car can give the impression that you're disorganized or just don't care. Make a sparkling impression that lasts. Stop by one of our Super Clean Car Wash locations. In Bedford, we are located behind McDonald's or find us in Orleans on Main Street. Super Clean Car Wash. It's not clean till it's super clean. This is Orleans Junior Forward, Sydney Moon. Your power station for Lady Bulldog Sports is Q100, WFLQ. We're back once again at 
Orleans High School, where Orleans thumps the Medora Lady Hornets tonight, 56 to 37 on the Busick Insurance scoreboard. One of the ladies that had a lot to do with that is senior guard Jenna Whalen. Ten points in the uh, contest, but boy, three three pointers to get things going. And uh, Jenna, I know that they uh, the team was looking for you there on this uh, first few shots, and well, it felt good that you did not disappoint. Yeah. Um, I went into the game thinking, you know, it's my last time here, so I may as well just try my hardest. And I got 10 points up, so, I mean, I guess that's, that's good. We figure talking on the radio is your second favorite thing to shooting three-pointers, right? Yeah, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I like it a lot. <laughs> all right. This night, all about you, uh, you had the poster, you had well-wishers all night long. Was it tough to kind of put the distractions aside and kind of focus on the game tonight? Yeah, I mean, before the game, during the JV game, I I wasn't really thinking about it. And then I got in the locker room, and we always pray before the game. And I was thinking during that how uh, this is my last time I'm going to get to do this with my team. And I was I didn't cry, but I was still a little a little upset about it. And then came out with my parents, hugged them, and then we were out there playing. And it just it felt good. I I didn't really think about it too much. But, yeah. You've been through this, you know, as an underclassman for so many years, watching those seniors get honored and things. Did you think about what what your night might be like? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I uh, I'd seen seniors in the past, you know, last year with Caitlin, Lily, Olivia, and Allie, and I saw how um, emotional and how bittersweet the moments can be during your senior night, and I kind of knew what to look forward to, and it was it was awesome. It was perfect. Obviously, many more chapters to write on this season, but uh, what have been some of the highlights for you uh, until uh, up till now? Um, I don't know. I just spending time with my team, I guess, is the best the best thing. And uh, the Edinburgh tournament, although we didn't we didn't get a win there, I I stepped up and played pretty good against um, New Washington, and I got us back in the game pretty quickly, and it kind of fired my teammates up, and it just felt good. Coaches uh, here in these last few games put you into the starting lineup. Is that something that you're starting to relish and feel like you're 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 doing better? Yeah, yeah. I really starting feels good for me. I mean, playing off the bench is is good, but starting's even better. So I I like it. Yeah, Jenna. You know, uh, one of the things that was announced is is that you're the captain of this team, and as a senior, you you did a great job here tonight, watching you lead your team. But what are some of those other things that this season you've really tried to make sure that you do as a captain and, and show some of these young freshmen that you have coming in? Uh, of you know, what are some of the roles that you you've taken on? Um, I just try to show the underclassmen to uh, be respectful on and off the court, and uh, not to argue with your teammates ever. Even if you're mad on the court, just we're a team. You have to play like a team to be a team. And I just try to get everybody, with, have, make them have positive attitudes um, throughout the season. And I really think that I've done a good job on that. Everybody seems to be liking ba- basketball, you know. And, you know, Jen, I know the, the wins maybe have not come as frequent as what everybody would like, but it's still everybody having fun. Do you think everybody's learning the game, especially these uh, young kids, and uh, are, are getting better because of it? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think that there have been a lot of games where we've, we've hustled pretty good and played pretty well, and it just hasn't gone our way. But I feel like that just helps even more and gets – gets the underclassmen maybe more of a drive to win next year more. I know uh, Saturday at Henryville you had your chances, didn't quite pull it out, but uh, can those be kind of blessings in disguise that, hey, if this situation arises again, we, we know even more now how to handle it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of those end-of-the-game situations we, we work on in practice, and we're able to get a shot off um, at the end most of the time and even though sometimes it doesn't go our way we're still able to uh, get that up the way we want so and i'll tell you the one thing that has not wavered and that is the support of this team mm-hmm. you're still getting good crowds coming out to the ball games i know a lot out here tonight we talked about the the well wishers your family all here uh, behind me cheering you on and stuff and that's got to make you feel good yeah it's great uh, it's great to see that the town loves to support us and me as a senior 
And, you know, growing up, I always saw the boys' games have huge crowds, and I was like, oh, that'd be great if I could have that one day. And I was pretty pleased with the crowd tonight. I mean, we had a lot of students over there. The band was here. It was it was pretty it was pretty awesome. All right. I want to make sure we're not giving a eulogy to this team. There's still a lot of basketball left, and, uh, you know, you've, you've got a shot. I mean, this team can – can certainly turn it around. You've got four games left to try to get better. Yes, it's a tough sectional over at Ligoti, but you've got to go in with the attitude that every game starts out 0-0, and you have just as much a chance to win as uh, as the other team. Yep, yep. Going into sectional with a pretty positive attitude, just like any other sectional. I mean, you don't want to be down on yourself thinking you're going to lose every game. Just go in with a positive attitude and see what the outcome is. All right. Anybody you'd like to uh, give a big thank you and, and shout out to here uh, before we go? I definitely want to give a big shout out, obviously, to my teammates. Um, they really supported me and helped me become the person and player I am. And um, I want to thank my dad, who has been there for me since day one, pushing me to be my best and work the hardest. And my grandpa, uh, who has done the same. He's always been there for me, no matter basketball, anything. He's always there for me. And I also want to thank McKenna. For Lee, um, for just pushing me to be my best, even though she's not here tonight, she's still here tonight. You know, um, this is her senior night too, and I just I value our friendship a lot and the years that we did get to play together. So, well, I like having her up here, by the way. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> she does a great job on the uh, stats. So she had everything perfect again tonight. So uh, <laughs> yeah. So yep. you're. You're giving love out to, to the people that uh, that certainly deserve that. Mm-hmm. Well, Jenna, again, congratulations on a, a terrific career to this point. Like I said, a lot more of the season still uh, to go. But I know uh, this one you'll always remember this night as uh, one of the highlights from your high school career. And hopefully maybe winning a sectional championship might uh, come close to that. Yep, definitely. All right. Jenna, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the win. And we'll see you a little bit later on in the year. Thank you. Good job, Jenna. That is Jenna Whalen, the lone senior on this Orleans girls basketball team, joining us here after the contest as Orleans closes out the home portion of their schedule with a nice win over the Medora Lady Hornets, 56-37. to Let's run through the scoring in the contest. First off for Medora as they drop to 2-12 and on the year, 1-5 and away from home. They had two players in double figures. In fact, those two accounted for 29 of their 37 points here tonight as uh, it was Lily Hatfield with 15 and Kaylin Flynn with 14. They did get six off the bench from Kenley King and the only other two points as Medora just had four players score was Katie Beasley who had a third quarter field goal. For Orleans tonight as they improved to 5-13 and 13 on the year, they'll finish the home portion of the schedule at 4 and six. By the way, in the last 28 meetings, Orleans has won 24 of those. They have now won 17 straight against Medora and seven consecutive contests here on this uh, uh, doghouse floor. Jared Gilbert dresses 14. He plays all 14, and 11 of those score with two and double figures. Sidney Moon had a big night.